Hi, and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and today we're going to talk about my top five features in Photoshop CC. I'm going to begin in the Lens Correction panel, and I'm going to remove any distortions in the image by enabling the Lens Profile Corrections. I'm also going to click on the Color tab, and I'm going to remove any chromatic aberration. But wouldn't it be nice if Camera Raw could also automatically fix common problems such as tilted horizons or converging verticals in these buildings? We know that that would need to be a perspective correction. Well, if we move over to the Manual tab, you'll notice that I have a new area here called Upright. And sure enough, if I click the Auto Upright, you can see that Camera Raw is removing or correcting the perspective here. Now, what it's doing is it's doing a visually balanced correction, but there are other options as well. So say, for example, you had some other scene where all you needed to do was straighten the horizon. Then you can click this icon right here. If you wanted to correct these buildings so that they were optically straight vertically, then you would click on the Next option here. And now you can see, especially if we decide to show our grid overlay, that those vertical lines are perfectly straight. But you'll notice that the horizontal lines are not straight. If I need to straighten those, then I'll move to the last icon here, and we'll do a full perspective correction so that both the horizontal and the vertical lines are straightened. And it's doing this all for me automatically. Let's take a look at the second image here, and we'll go through the same options. I'll click on the first icon so we can get a nice kind of balanced correction. We could simply level it. We could get the vertical correction, or if I wanted to make this perfectly straight, we can go ahead and do the full correction. I'll go ahead and turn off the grid, but what you might have noticed is that the dog in the window got a little bit kind of compressed. So we have another new option here, the aspect option, which we can go ahead and compress them more, or we can go ahead and put them back to their normal state. Now let's take a look at my second favorite feature, which is the radial filter. Now this filter is also in Camera Raw, and the best thing about it is that it allows us to apply any and all of the local adjustments to a circular mask with like a feather fall off. So we can preload whatever we want to put in here. So in this case, I'll go ahead and add a negative exposure, and we'll make it rather large to make sure that we can see it, and I'll click and drag. And you can see that what's happening is outside of the radial that I'm drawing, it's darkening down those edges. But it's not just for vignetting, right? We have a way to vignette. This vignette, though, you'll notice, we can move this anywhere. So this can not only be an off-center vignette, but we can, of course, apply all of these different attributes. So if I also wanted to, say, lessen the sharpness outside of this vignette, I can just drag the sharpness to the left. If I wanted to desaturate, I could do that as well. Of course, all of this is non-destructive, and I can come back to it at any point in time and make changes. I can also add more than one radial filter. So let's click New, and this time I want to add an increase in the highlights. I'll also add a little bit of an increase in saturation as well as sharpness, and then click and drag to add my second radial filter. But you'll see that what I've done is I've added those effects to the outside. What I need to do instead is scroll down and simply click the option here to put the effect on the inside. Now if we hide that and tap the P key, we can see before and after. And you can see how I can focus the viewer's eye into a specific portion of my image. And of course, if I think that that's too strong, we can always come back, select either one of these, and then make modifications, and it's always non-destructive. Excellent. Now, before we leave Camera Raw, I want to just show you one last feature, because I know you're going to love it. Right here, I'm going to tap the B key, and I'm going to grab my Spot Healing Brush. Now, in the past, this would have to be a circle, but you'll notice now that if I click and drag, I can create any shape I want for Camera Raw to either heal or clone. And if I hide that interface by tapping the V key, you can see that it's done a very good job. But if we want to or if we need to, we can go ahead and move around that source point in order to get the exact cloning or healing to remove that object. 
And one last thing, I'll just scroll down and we'll select this image for a moment. You can see that this image has a number of spots here. There's one right here and one here and one here. And so I can quickly get rid of those. And I might actually think at this point I'm finished, but we have a new tool that allows us to visualize spots. And if I move over the slider to the right, we can now see actually kind of embarrassing how many spots I actually have in this image because of the dust on my sensor. So this is gonna enable us to go and clean up things because there's nothing worse than going and printing something and then realizing that you've actually missed those spots. And since I've already used up two of my top five features, I just want to mention that Camera Raw is now also a filter in Photoshop. So if you're not starting with raw files, like let's say someone hands off a file to you, or maybe you've been working with an image in a composite and you forgot to run something like, like the upright filter, or maybe you forgot to add a little bit of clarity, you can now do that as a filter in Photoshop. And of course, you can turn your layer or layers into smart objects before running that filter, and then you'll have a non-destructive smart filter. So be sure to check that out. Excellent, let's go ahead and take a look at this next feature. There are actually two technologies here that I wanna show you that are gonna help us to get the highest quality out of our images. The first one, we'll select under image and then image size. First of all, what you might notice is that I can now expand this image size dialog box so that I get a really large preview over here on the left. And why might I want that? Well, because I wanna see exactly what this image is going to look like after I either sample it up or sample it down. And let's go ahead and do a rather large change here. Instead of seven inches, let's go ahead and print this at like 25 inches. And now we'll be able to see the difference between the new algorithm, which is preserve details. So whenever I'm scaling up, Photoshop will automatically use preserve details if you've got this set to automatic. And we can compare that to the older technology, which was the bicubic smoother. And when I select that, you can see how much softer the image gets. Now, I'm not sure with the compression that's put on this video if you can really see the difference, but let's try one more time. There's the new technology, the preserved details. You can see it's a lot sharper than before with the bicubic smoother. So again, if you just set this to automatic, Photoshop will automatically choose the preserved details if you're enlarging an image. And of course, it's also smart enough to pick bicubic sharper if you're reducing the file size. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the other technology. This is gonna be found under the filter menu and then down to Sharpen and Smart Sharpen. Now, Smart Sharpen has been in Photoshop for quite some time, but the great thing about it, again, is we have this really nice preview here. And if we just take a look at the camera area, you'll notice that if I increase the amount, and I'm gonna put a pretty heavy amount here just to make sure that we can see this on the video. Let's knock up the radius to about two. And now we can see if we just click in there, there's before, and there's after with the sharpening. So there's before and there's after. And if I wanna compare that to the older technology, if I use legacy or tap the L key, that's what it looked like before. You'll notice there's a lot more noise here, especially in the hands and in the shadow areas. If I tap the L key again, this is the new technology. You can see that it's removing a lot of that noise. And in fact, we've even got a noise reduction slider so we can reduce more of this if we need to in our image. So those are two excellent technologies that are gonna help us maintain the highest quality image possible. All right, so my fourth favorite feature is the ability to create live or dynamic rounded corners on rectangles. So here I have a bunch of different rectangles. They're actually instances of the same one that I created as a smart object. So let's double click on that in order to see this rectangle. And we'll use the properties panel now to control this live rounded corner. You can see that I can link all of the corners together and then when I click and drag with my scrubby slider, it will automatically update this. Or we could turn the link off and then I could go ahead and simply change one of the corners at a time. Of course, I can save this file, come back to it next week or next year, and I'll still have this dynamic editing capability. Well, the great thing about doing this as a smart object is of course, if I save this, and then close this, we can see that it would actually update all of those instances in my image. There have been other tools that have also been updated. There's easier ways to select shapes now in the new version of Photoshop, as well as special filter modes so that you can kind of isolate different groups of images that you're working with. 
Now let's talk about my fifth and final favorite feature in Photoshop CC, and that is the Camera Shake Reduction Filter. This filter is going to help us to sharpen images with camera motion caused by either slow shutter speed or maybe a little bit of just movement in the camera. And so it's, it's to fix things when the camera is moving, not if the person in the photo is moving. Now before I run this filter, we're going to change the background into a smart object so that it is a non-destructive filter. And then under the filter menu, we can choose sharpen and shake reduction. Now the shake reduction technology is going to automatically look and analyze the image and then it's going to try to find the direction of the shake and auto correct that for me. And in fact, we can either zoom in to 100% or I can tap the Q key which will put this loop on top of my image. And then anywhere I look in my image, we can see the before with the motion in it and the after after it's been corrected. So hopefully after this video's been compressed, you'll still be able to see the difference, obviously between the before and the after. I'll tap the Q key to go ahead and put that back. Of course, there's an advanced area here where we can actually see the blur trace that it's, that it's creating. And if we wanted to manually adjust that, we could go ahead and reposition it. Now again, with this image, it's obvious that the tripod that was sitting in the water actually moved a little bit during the long exposure. That's what this technology is really, really good at fixing. And I'll go ahead and click OK. It might be that sometimes the shake in the image is a little different from one area to the next. Well, that's the beauty about creating a smart object. You know, it might be that the technology can't correct the entire image at once, but look how easy it is to go in here. And if you find any artifacting like this, all we need to do is tap the B to get our paintbrush and then click inside the mask for this smart filter. Get a little bit larger brush and make sure that we're painting with black and we can just remove that little bit of artifacting right from that area. Again, here it is before and after. Of course, there are additional new features as well as product refinements, but they can't all be in my top five. I'm Julianne Koss. Thanks for watching.